Hey everyone, it's Anna and I'm back with another vintage cookbook. This time I'm reviewing Better Homes and Gardens, Good Food on a Budget. If you'd like to go straight to the recipe portion of this video, you can skip ahead to this timestamp. I selected this book because food costs are very much top of mind for a lot of people right now. Prices on food are just climbing and climbing, so I thought maybe this would give us a few good ideas. Starting with the cover, it's got a lovely, what looks like maybe a pot roast meal here. This book promises to have appetizing low cost menus, tasty recipes to save time and money, and how to get best food buys. One good way to save money on your grocery bill is to make sure that you have enough food, but not so much food that you end up throwing some out. This chart on the inside front cover just kind of shows you how much to buy of everything. It gives you the serving size and then, you know, amount needed for two, three, and four servings. Every time I go to the store, my grocery bill goes up. This statement is made daily by homemakers throughout the country, homemakers and everyone else. It's a little wonder you feel this way. First of all, food costs do keep rising. This book was originally published in 1971. Food costs on the rise, you know, it's been a trend for quite some time. Sometimes they reflect the cost of seasonal foods, but all too often they indicate a new level of prices. There's not a lot of unusual stuff in here. Good basic recipes that people are going to enjoy. No funny business here. Most of these ingredients are pretty cost effective even today. We're not doing like crown roasts or anything like that that you might see in other Better Homes and Gardens cookbooks. That doesn't mean that we don't have a little something like Frank and Potato Bake. So that's Frank and Potato Bake right there. I do find that these cookbooks have a lot of uses for hot dogs. Franks or hot dogs are pretty affordable and they can be versatile, although I mostly just prefer to grill mine and eat it on a bun. This recipe uh, consists of a pound of Frankfurters, two thirds a cup reconstituted non-fat dry milk. So this is a trend that I noticed a lot in this book. I'm assuming that you can use regular milk in place of the reconstituted milk for the most part. I believe that using dry milk maybe was a a little bit more common in the past uh, as a way to save money. It is nice to have dry milk on hand if you're putting together maybe like a food storage kind of stockpile just to have an emergencies. Oh, the other one on here that I thought was interesting was this mackerel noodle bake. I'm not a mackerel person. If you like mackerel, that is for you. I just, I haven't found a way that I particularly like it myself. And it does say that you can substitute a can of salmon in this recipe. So that's probably what I would do. So one of the things I liked about this book is that throughout they have these little economy tips and this particular one is cheese hints. I read through these cheese hints and I'm not going to say that these are up to date. Tip number one, processed cheese is less expensive than natural cheese. I don't think so. Not today. So processed cheese, I'm assuming they're talking about something like a Velveeta product. Velveeta is expensive, y'all. <laughs> if you're trying to make like crock pot, you know, cheese dip, that Velveeta is gonna cost you a pretty penny. At one time, I think it was a little bit cheaper, but if you wait for sales, like you can stock up on regular cheese at a pretty good price. Tip number two, processed cheese has more cheese and less water than processed cheese spread. Sure. And then tip number three, it is more expensive to buy cheese already grated, shredded, or sliced. I find that sometimes that is the case, other times it's not. If my local store has a sale on cheese, it's kind of like this brand of cheese, all varieties. If you can wait for sales and just kind of like buy a couple of extra things ahead of time if it's in your budget, that's a great way to save on cheese. Oh my. So this was a, a recipe I didn't initially see. Sweet sour liver. <laughs> I don't like liver. I have tried, I have tried, and it's just not a thing that I am into. But if you're into it, maybe you wanna try this recipe. Oh, this must be the organ meat section because we've got stuffed beef heart, barbecued tongue. So I'm curious, and maybe maybe one of my viewers can tell me, are these cuts of meat, like heart, kidney, tongue, liver, are they still pretty cost effective or have they gone up in price? I don't personally buy them, so I don't know, but I know at one time they were a really cost effective way to get like more protein in your diet. So I don't know. If you do, please let me know in the comments. So in true Better Homes and Gardens fashion, we do have a chapter about company dinners. So you're trying to impress. You can impress on a budget, according to BH&G. Got lunches to eat at home. Thrifty meat bean stew. So that is this right here. And the meat in the meat bean stew is, it's like a luncheon meat, kind of like a spam, basically. Again, with the one cup reconstituted non-fat dry milk. Oh, there was one illustration here that I just loved because it reminds me a little bit of myself and probably some of you too if you're if you're watching because you like vintage cookbooks. This more for your money section. 
Look at that. It's a whole collection of BH and G. And I think I have all of these except maybe two. So there's one here called Famous Foods from Famous Places. I don't have that one. I don't think I have the BH and G dessert cookbook. Are you back there? But I thought that was so funny that they just kind of had a whole bunch of their own cookbooks here. Also love these blue cabinets right here. We did have one illustration for the basic food guide, which used to be the four basic food groups replaced with the food pyramid, replaced with who knows what. Is it is it still the food pyramid? I don't know. And I love these like colorful pen drawings. Look, there's our processed cheese. <laughs> they have a picture of processed cheese in here, but not like actual cheese. That is hilarious. I really, really liked this recipe because it is in the leftover section. Love to repurpose a leftover. Today I'm going to be preparing chicken spoon bread. I've never made spoon bread, but from my understanding, it's sort of between a cornbread and a souffle. So this has got some yellow cornmeal in it. It's got your chicken broth, reconstituted non-fat dry milk. I'm using regular milk. That's just what's happening. Some eggs and some leftover chopped chicken. Really looking forward to giving this a try and I hope it turns out well. So let's get started. So chicken spoon bread right here. We have to start by cooking a few things on the stove. In saucepan, mix cornmeal, flour, and one quarter teaspoon of salt. I have my yellow cornmeal here in my yellow measuring cup. Love these Tupperware measuring cups. And then one tablespoon of flour. Mix that up before I move on. One quarter teaspoon of salt. Stir in broth and milk. We have one cup of chicken broth. And to make this chicken broth, instead of buying it from a carton or a box or a can, I just like to use Better Than Bullion for something like this. This is a great money saver. You can get a great big jar of this at Costco for not very much. There's 76 cups of broth in here and they make it in different flavors. So I like to keep like the chicken, the vegetable and the beef on hand. I've also seen mushroom flavored, French onion flavored, ham flavored. So it comes in a lot of varieties. Also one cup of milk. That splashed, it's fine, I'm wearing an apron. <laughs> Cook and stir for two minutes or until bubbly. It doesn't really say the temperature, so I'm going medium here. And once it starts to bubble, we cook it for a couple more minutes. We have some bubbling, it is happening. So I'm gonna set a timer for two minutes and stir this constantly. Oh yeah, oh, we are in business now. <laughs> Look at those bubbles, can you see them? Am I making polenta right now? Is that what I'm doing? I think I might be making polenta. Oh gosh, look at how thick that is. All right, time's up. Next, I remove this from the heat. We'll just put it over here, I guess. And then I stir in two tablespoons of butter or margarine. I have butter. Margarine, of course, would save you a little bit more money, but I don't usually have that on hand. So I'm using what I have, which is a great way to save money as well. That butter is all melted in there. I have to let it cool for a bit before I move on to the next step. While the cornmeal mixture is cooling, I'm going to prepare my eggs. So I have two large room temperature eggs. I have to separate the eggs and then beat the whites until they come to stiff peaks like you would for a souffle. I think this is gonna be the whites. This is gonna be the yolks. And these are spring blossom bowls. Okay, one down. Ooh, that was a good one. I did it. Okay, yeah, we're there. We're there. We are back to our cornmeal mixture. And to that, I am adding the egg yolks. Then I have one and a half cups of just like shredded leftover chicken. This is from a rotisserie chicken. You could do that. You could just cook up some chicken breasts and, and cut those up. A lot of times if I am grilling chicken or doing something like that, I will just throw a little bit of extra on the grill, not to eat right away, but just to use for later. So I always try to keep a little bit of shredded chicken in my freezer. I'm assuming this would be like a main dish. It doesn't really say, but just with the addition of having chicken in there, it seems like a main dish. Like maybe you'd serve this alongside a nice salad or some vegetables or something like that. I think we're there with this. Final ingredient is those egg whites that we just beat up. I'm supposed to fold those in. And I guess this is probably gonna give you your volume for the spoon bread, just like it would in a souffle. I would love to know if any of you have tried this recipe or maybe even just spoon bread in general, especially like adding chicken to it. Is that common to add little extras in there? Or is this is this a BH and G special? <laughs> Let me know in the comments. Lastly, I'm supposed to pour this mixture into a one quart casserole. It didn't say if I should use like 
a shallow casserole or anything like that. So hopefully this will work. It is one quart, it's, it's pretty tall. Also, it's a beautiful pattern that I absolutely love. So I desperately wanted to use it. This is greased, so I greased the casserole. There's no picture of this, so I'm just assuming this is correct, but here is what we have. And I'm gonna bake this for one hour in a 325 degree oven. very beautiful and golden. The texture is very much like the chocolate pudding souffle I made. I did have to let this bake for an extra 25 minutes or so. I think that if I did this again, I would of course still use a one quart casserole dish, but if I have something a little bit more shallow, I would go with that instead. I think this was maybe just a little too tall. The smell of this baking is very much like my grandma's kitchen. It smells like melted butter and chicken. <laughs> It's a really like homey, warm, comforting smell. Before I had to get, give it a taste, look at that. Look at that. So this is one of the plates I picked up for my birthday and it matches the pattern on my casserole dish. Ooh, okay. It got a nice like brown edge on it too. Yeah, it smells, it smells like chicken soup or like chicken and dumplings, something like that. It's really good, I really like that. I'd probably add a touch more seasoning, I always say that. It's kind of like a like a chicken and dressing. It's very tasty. I'd add maybe like pinch more salt and maybe some like herbs. Some thyme would be really good in this. Like any, any herbs that you would use when you're roasting a chicken. As is, I think it is pretty great though. I wanna eat a little bit more. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate your support. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel by clicking on the red button below. This type of engagement really, really helps my channel grow and gives more people the opportunity to watch my videos. Thanks again, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.